Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sean. This is Room Shots with Sean, brought to you by Barstools and Van Duck. I have, uh, this is actually going to be neat for me because I was on this show a couple times. I have Mr. Rick Howe, who you will all know is the voice of Halifax for the longest, not only Halifax, but the Maritimes. How are you, sir? I am well, thank you very much. So, Great to be here tonight. Well, uh, you know what? This is very exciting for me. I was talking to somebody uh, last week and uh, just about a couple of things that uh, I want to get your point of view on because I'm sure, you know, if you were still going, you'd be out there front and center, as we say. So, first off, you and I chatted last night. I mean, you're you're retired, but I'm using air quotes. You have a lot on the go. That's right. I, in fact, I got a book that is coming out in this fall. I just received word today another book will be released next fall. Uh, I've written a piece for the Herald, a commentary, expressing disappointment with Dr. Strang and the uh, no mask mandate. Uh, so, yeah, it, uh, it keeps me busy. I'm a news junkie. I, I follow the news religiously. I read the papers in the morning. I watch uh, CNN during the daytime, even reti- the, the local news at night, and even retired. Uh, it's just something that's always been a part of me. So, uh, yeah, it keeps me busy. So, I, I read that piece, and I actually I, I happened upon it. Uh, I. I don't really uh, spend much time in the Herald anymore, but Gloria McCluskey had actually posted it, and uh, she had a really neat commentary, and I went and read it. Um, tell my listeners and viewers, Rick, what that was about. Well, I'm, I'm uh, immunocompromised, and uh, so I'm among a group of Nova Scotians that are more, uh, more likely to get COVID-19 than other Nova Scotians. So my, my piece was... Uh, basically uh, lamenting the loss of the mask mandate, social distancing, uh, and, and some of the rules that uh, that we relaxed not so long ago. Uh, my point was that we're treating COVID today as if it never existed. People are out and about enjoying the summer, and you can't blame them. I mean, after being cooped up for a couple of years, people are out and about enjoying their summer uh, without masks, without social distancing. Uh, go to the grocery store, count how many people have masks on. Probably not many. Go to the bank, stand in line. How many people wear masks? Hardly any. So my point was that there are uh, thousands of Nova Scotians like myself who are more susceptible to COVID-19. And what's the problem with in, in having a mask mandate? It's simply asking people when you're inside a public area, put on a mask. Whether it be the Scotia Bank Center checking out the hockey games or just going down to the grocery store or, you know, to the local Walmart or whatever, all I'm suggesting is that, you know, bring back the mandate that requires people to wear a mask. The Dr. Strang says that, you know, it's 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 a, it's a recommendation. Well, I say you got to go beyond recommendation because COVID is spreading like wildfire across this country. Many provinces in the United States are entering a seventh wave. We can't be too far behind. Uh, emergency rooms are jam-packed. Uh, healthcare workers are overworked and stressed out. Uh, and, you know, this would help, uh, again, limit the spread of COVID-19. This new variant, DA5, is apparently more uh, more virulent. That is, it easily spreads, though the symptoms aren't quite as bad as I understand things right now. But my, my, my point being, Dr. Strang threw in the towel, gave it to political pressure, and relented in lifting every single mandate that had been protecting Nova Scotians for a couple of years. Uh, all I ask is that bring back the mask mandate. Is it that much to expect people to put on a mask when they go inside a, a public space? And so when you, you put that out, what was what was the reaction that you got? I mean, um, obviously, you know, two years of things being everything from totally locked down to easing back to lockdown again. Um, I mean, frankly, and, and, you know, me being a musician in my industry um, affected greatly. Um, a lot of people just, uh, you know, had enough of, well, you know, I guess the authoritarian type, type rule, if you will. But what was your what was the reaction that you got from people when you when you put that piece out? Mostly positive. Uh, in fact, the day the paper, the day the story was in the paper, I just happened to be in a local uh, a local store, sitting in the car waiting for my wife to come back out. And a couple walked by and looked at me. and came back and said, "You're the guy in the paper." And uh, you know, I <laughs> a little shy, perhaps. I said, "Sure, yes, it can help you." And they said, "Well, we agree with everything you said. Uh, you mentioned that Gloria McCluskey put a uh, comment on her uh, her web page." Uh, on Facebook, and uh, I think the reaction was mostly positive to what I had said. I mean, you know, I, I don't expect everybody to agree with everything I say all the time, uh, and obviously there will be critics uh, who say that, you know, enough is enough, we've gone through two years of this stuff, 
All I'm saying is that COVID's not done with us yet, so let's stop treating COVID like it's uh, never existed, and, and you know we're going to live happily ever after. This fall is going to be uh, a, a fall to reckon with if we continue along this line. In fact, you know there are now healthcare professionals who are calling states and provinces to reinstate the mask mandates. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, the time has come for Dr. Strang uh, to get back into, uh, you know, what he's supposed to be doing and that's protecting all Nova Scotians and uh, do just that. Um, what do you think? And I mean, obviously we don't want to do a whole piece on COVID here, but what, obviously when, when everything started and it was new and, and, and unknown, you know, he kind of, he acted a certain way. And obviously the, you know, the premier of the day was, was a different fella. Um, you know, my opinion, and I don't want to get into too much of Stephen McNeil, I mean, he comes across to me as just like the Iron Fist, I don't want to say bully, but I will type guy. He kind of had Ian Rankin that was in the middle, and then Tim Houston's kind of, I don't know, more to the other side. Well, do you think do you think Strang's getting pulled around here a little bit, or you just think that he's just trying I, to do I, best? I think so. Uh, I mean, you know, I think uh, Stephen McNeil was fully supportive of what Dr. Strang was doing. And Strang had the full support of the government in bringing in the mask mandate and the social distancing and all the other rules that he had uh, in place. Uh, Ian Rankin, you're right, he kind of a, you know, a weak, weak kind of premier, I guess. Uh, and then Tim Houston, uh, I think he recognized uh, the business community and, and people like yourself, uh, you know, were many were in dire straits. Some were in danger of losing their businesses because of the shutdowns and the lockdowns and, and the, the different things. Uh, and, and I think that Tim Houston recognized that and started to swing government that way so that dollars and cents became more of a priority than people's lives. That sounds rather harsh. And, and, and I feel for the many businesses and, and musicians like yourself you know, who have struggled over the course of the last couple of years, you know, now find the freedom to get out and doing what you love to do. Uh, how many, I mean, the businesses uh, run successfully, uh, good for them, but uh, let's keep in mind again, COVID is not done with it, and we are acting just like it was. So I think that Strang began to uh, perhaps get a lot of political pressure from uh, from Tim Houston. Uh, I'm sure businesses, uh, Pat Murphy from the Board of Trade, for example, were uh, you know, giving him an earful uh, on, on a regular occasion. And uh, as the other countries or the other provinces rather began to loosen their restrictions, Strange just jumped on board and said, uh, okay, we're, we're going to follow suit. And here we are today again. People enjoying the summer months, and, and good for that. We've had a great summer so far. But uh, COVID is there. It's lurking. It's uh, not going to go away. And if we continue down this road, uh, look out this fall. Um, yeah, and I mean, the, the thing for me in all this, and I mean, when I say me, I, I, just, I have a group of people. I mean, my, my little podcast was I was doing community radio sports, and there was no sports, so I went back to my, my music roots and, you know, sort this big group blew up. Um, people, I think, were just kind of frustrated because you know, certain people wanted to help out and offer suggestions, and they just felt they weren't being listened to. Um, you know, that's, which, a, that's, that's the problem government has. You know, they they say elect us and we'll listen to what you have to say, and, and then they get elected and and they never do. <laughs> that's 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 politics. That's why a lot of people these days, no matter what the political level is, municipal, provincial, or federal, people are disenchanted with politics and and, and politicians. Yeah, and, and I mean that's a fair statement. I mean that, that that's a whole other topic for another day. But I guess one of the things that frustrated a lot of people that I knew more than anything else is, and, and it was Rankin, you know shut down, then everything opened up, and then not listen, and then, you know, there's the photo up on the, the patio bar in downtown Halifax with his wife, and everybody's, you know, happy days are here again, and yeah. it was just a whole sense of, geez, you know what, you put us in a really, uh, well, you, they didn't have a choice, let's call it what it is, but um, they kind of didn't take suggestions or feedback or listen, and, and that's, I guess, like you say, kind of the way they operate. Yeah, I hope they are now, I hope they are listening, uh, and as I mentioned already, you know, I've been uh, on the news in the last few days, there have been a number of uh, medical experts, both in the U.S. and in Canada, who are suggesting that it is time to uh, consider or time to bring back uh, the mask mandate. Uh, and so when, when, when health professionals start speaking, hopefully that uh, those within you know, political situations within governments are uh, listening to what they have to say. Perhaps they're not listening to what the people have to say, but when, when an expert like Dr. Lisa Barrett, for example, uh, and I have high regard for Lisa Barrett, 
Uh, you know, she she hasn't come quite out right and said it yet, but I believe that she would like to see uh, a mask mandate brought back. And I know that, again, not to repeat, but there are other professionals across this country who are suggesting the same thing. So far, governments have either you know, just said no or haven't said no yet. Uh, but uh, again, the, the number of cases is on the rise. Uh, this a BA5 is, I think, responsible now for over 50% of all new cases. Uh, last I saw, over 100,000 new cases a day in the United States of America. Uh, if you look at their, 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 their hotspot maps, they have red, orange, and green. There's no green left in the United States, green being uh, under 10% of COVID. It's all either bright red or, or orange. Uh, and uh, again, you know, that's, <laughs> it's a coming and we're not ready for it yet. I'm glad you mentioned uh, Lisa Barrett because I, uh, I guess it was a year ago, the 1st of May, I was one of the people that, that caught COVID. Um, I had no symptoms. Uh, I didn't have any symptoms when um, I got all three of my, my shots. But when I got it, Lisa Barrett was the one that called me um, to kind of tell me, hey, you've got it. And it was uh, she was on your show a bunch. Yep. I knew her voice, and it was, just, wow, what a, <laughs> this is cool. It's a very soothing thing. She was very calm. She, you know. Within 30 seconds, all the myths about what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to handle contact with people, she just cleared it up. And it was amazing because um, everybody that, you know, all my friends, this is what you're supposed to do. No, this yeah. is what you're supposed to do because Lisa told me, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I had her on my show for an hour, and, and at the end of the hour, there's still people on the phone who wanted to ask her questions. And she makes herself available. Uh, you see her regularly on both the CBC and, and, and CTV, locally and nationally. Uh, she's quoted in the paper a lot. You know, she's a very intelligent, uh, smart person and a, an infectious disease expert. And I think we should pay close attention to what Dr. Barrett has to say. And uh, I, I, a question I have tonight is where is Dr. Strang now? In, in the face of, you know, mounting concern about rising COVID cases, with health professionals now suggesting uh, it's time to reconsider or even bring back the mask mandate. We're stuck just trying on this. He has been silent for the last number of, of, of weeks anyway, if not longer. And I, I just wonder, you know, what, what his take is in all of this now. Does he regret making that decision to lift all restrictions? Or is he now considering the fact that because of the rising number of COVID cases, it is indeed time to do just that? Fair enough. Well, you know what, sir? That was pretty quick. It's just like... Again, it's like I'm hosting your old show because we're done with our first segment. Um, and for me, like I say, straight up, this is very cool because uh, I used to have a job that had me in my vehicle a lot, and um, I used to listen to your show religiously. Um, one of my favorite segments became the Friday Face Off with you and Todd Vino. Um, Todd's yeah. become a great friend. He's a musician himself. We're going to get together and jam with Todd at some point. Um, I want to cover a bunch of other things in the next segment. Um, sure. I just want to think, I may, I may join you someday. I just bought a guitar, and I just got my book today, How to Play the Guitar, learn how to play the guitar. So, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll be up to the stage with you strumming away. Well, I tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll welcome that any time, because we like to have people sit in and, and, and uh, be guests and stuff like that, so we'll make that happen, my friend. All right. We're going to be back with Rick Howe after this.